If you're seeking a spaciously compact, prestigiously badged premium five-door hatchback, then you're probably thinking diesel power and German badge work. Here's a different way to go. This significantly improved version of Lexus's first-generation CT200H petrol-electric hybrid announced for the 2018 model year to prolong this design's life in our market. Earlier versions of this car needed a little perfecting, but in this form, it's become a surprisingly credible choice if overall running costs and exemplary refinement number amongst your key priorities. Plus, as before, the CT is classy to own and kind to the environment. In short, it's still got plenty to offer. Looking for a premium badged compact hatch? If so, you may be looking for an alternative to smoky diesel power. Here's an interesting one, the much improved Lexus CT200H petrol electric hybrid. If you've recognized that fueling from the black pump isn't an especially environmental option, you might think your choices are pretty limited in the posh part of the family hatchback sector, where models like the BMW 1 Series, the Mercedes A-Class and the Audi A3 dominate. A car of this sort with conventional petrol power may not be efficient enough for you. A petrol-electric plug-in hybrid model could well be too pricey, and an all-electric contender would restrict your operating range. All of which ought to leave a useful niche for this little Lexus. It's based on non-plug-in petrol-electric hybrid technology taken straight from an old third-generation Toyota Prius. And because the development costs of that technology have long been accounted for by millions of Prius sales, this CT200H can offer lots of equipment and lovely Lexus craftsmanship, yet still sell at prices comparable to more conventional diesel rivals. The CT will be quieter, run on cheaper fuel and be less expensive to service too. You think that would create quite a tempting proposition, but the reality is that relatively few buyers in this segment even consider this Lexus when sizing up their options. Why? Well, it may be partly because of early press reports of this model's original launch back in 2011. These criticised its rather over-firm ride and thrashy CVT auto gearbox, but have since neglected to mention that a package of improvements introduced in 2014 did improve things in both these areas. This car's lack of current market penetration is probably also down to the fact that it's been around for such a long period, during which all kinds of new arrivals have distracted attention away from its rather unusual proposition. Hence the need for a further CT200H update in late 2017, the one which has bought us the car that we're going to look at here, with its smarter look, upgraded infotainment and stronger standards of safety. Would it be enough to revitalise this model's prospects? Let's find out. If you're still not familiar with the hybrid driving experience and are coming to this car fresh from a more conventional diesel powered rival, a bit of adjustment will be needed, but not too much. Press the power start button and the virtual silence is very different from the ugly grumbly diesel note delivered by this car's competitors. That's because from start up to speeds of about 25 miles an hour, or for very short distances, this car, in theory anyway, is supposed to automatically operate in EV mode under electric power alone. Unfortunately, the range in question really is very short, about 1.2 miles. It would be longer if this car used a modern lithium ion battery rather than an old tech nickel metal hydride one, but that of course would add to the cost. That's nevertheless a premium you might think wealthier CT200H buyers could be interested in considering. Lexus thinks not, and for the same reason declines to offer the kind of plug-in hybrid functionality with this car that parent company Toyota has developed for pricier versions of its Prius. I mentioned the Prius because the pre-2015 third generation version of that model provides virtually all the mechanicals for this car's hybrid drive system. 
a little disappointingly, Lexus has chosen not to build into this revised CT the improved hybrid powertrain used in the more recent Mark IV model Prius, a setup that features a reduction in size for the electric motors and battery. So the mechanical setup here remains exactly as it was when this CT200H was first launched in 2011. Namely, a nickel metal hydride battery mated to a 98 brake horsepower, 1.8 litre VVTI petrol engine, an 81 brake horsepower electric motor, a power control unit and a power split device. The two outputs I've mentioned are never delivered at the same time, which is why, slightly confusingly, the total power output of this model is quoted at 134 brake horsepower. It's a clever, proven setup, and the fact that it allows you to run independently on either battery or petrol power, as well as using the two things in tandem, sets it apart from lower tech hybrids like those that Honda used to make, where the power sources could only ever work together. That's the theory anyway. The reality though is that the feeble electric only maximum speed restricts EV use to urban stop start traffic and even there I found that the engine requires very little encouragement to chip into proceedings. You stand a better chance of staying solely in milk float mode if you press an EV button on the centre console that with restrained throttle use will leave you gliding silently along until the power charge is spent at the end of your operating range. That's provided, of course, that the battery is kept fully charged up by the engine, a process you can help with by increasing the amount of energy the car reclaims through regenerative braking. To optimize that, you've only to remember to snick the neat, stubby gear stick of the six-speed CVT automatic gearbox that all CT200H models must have from D to B. When it is time for the petrol engine to cut in, the transition is almost seamless, so it's helpful to be able to monitor things via this neat energy flow monitor on the dash, there to show you what's being charged or being driven by what. Once you're up and running with battery and petrol power chipping in and out, Lexus says that the CT200H has been engineered to perform in two driving moods, uh, relaxing or dynamic depending on the setting that you choose from this center drive controller. Should you be feeling laid back, you'll probably have the control set to normal, which uh, via which the petrol engine will take over from the electric motor as and when needed. But given that you're not in a hurry, it might just be better to switch to eco mode, where throttle openings are reduced and the aircon system optimized to save fuel. Driving in this way suits this car's character best. But you'll also be wanting to know about this Lexus's dynamic repertoire and maybe also the difference that might be made by switching to the last, most purposeful sport setting. This, after all, is a car that must compete with agile Audi A3s and brawny BMW 1 series models, which is a tough ask for a rebodied Toyota Prius never designed for such antics, especially since all CTs must use a resolutely unsporting six-speed CVT automatic gearbox that lacks even something as basic as steering wheel paddle shifters. Still, uh, click over to the sport setting and this little Lexus does its best, switching the instrument cluster backlighting from blue to red and transforming the hybrid power indicator on the dash into a rev counter in an attempt to match your mood. More importantly, this mode delivers an extra 150 volts of extra electric motor power to enable a rest of 62 mile an hour sprint time of 10.3 seconds as engine revs are held longer, throttle and steering response sharpened, and the traction and stability control systems rendered less intrusive. That's actually a little quicker than a directly comparable diesel model like Audi's A3 1.6 TDI. It all sounds quite promising, especially as it's matched by a brilliant low-set cockpit-like driving position and firm, supportive, sporty seats. Unfortunately, there are two issues that the engineers behind this car have only partly addressed during its lifetime. In pursuit of the kind of sporty handling that German rivals claim to offer, and in an attempt to distance this Lexus from its Prius donor model, the engineers saddled the earliest versions of this CT200H with a rather over-firm set of suspension responses, resulting in ride quality so firm it could sometimes verge on being unpleasant. 
nor was this car in its original form as quiet as its near silent hybrid power plant, an issue exacerbated by the thrashy CVT auto gearbox that sent revs shooting skywards every time it was required to shift out of its comfort zone. It was all very unlexus like now, to be fair to the brand, efforts were quickly made to try and improve things in both these areas, which resulted in the much improved version of this car that was introduced for the 2014 model year. Various sound deadening measures and a package of transmission recalibrations designed to reduce the gearbox's thrashiness together usefully enhanced refinement. Not quite so successful were the efforts made to deal with the ride quality issue. A program of spot welding, mostly around the tailgate, improved body rigidity enough for the suspension spring rates to be loosened up a bit, but uh, this car still struggles to properly insulate you from bumpy surfaces in a way, in the way a Lexus really should. Now that wouldn't be so much of an issue if adaptive damping had been made widely available to help alleviate things. Unfortunately, Lexus has only ever offered this feature, uh, the company calls its system lateral performance damping, uh, on this car in pricey F-Sport form. It can't be had on any other variant, even as an option, and unfortunately that policy hasn't changed with this post-2017 revised model. Still, the ride quality issue is one that most buyers would probably be able to live with. It's certainly not as bad as some of the magazines would have you believe. In most cases, the reports in question haven't been properly revised to take account of those 2014 model year changes. And the setup does at least partly achieve its original intended objective, that of giving this car a neat, precise cornering demeanor, though this is rather undermined by vague steering and that lethargic CVT auto gearbox. You might find the brakes a bit sharp to begin with as well. To be fair, few of these drawbacks will manifest themselves on the smooth highway journeys that will probably occupy owners across the majority of their mileage. It's here that the light steering becomes a boon rather than a drawback, and it's here too that you can revel in the beautiful cabin and peerless refinement that apparently gets within four decibels of the kind of cabin quietness that you could expect in a Rolls-Royce Ghost. In this regard, at least, the CT is exactly as you'd want a Lexus to be. It is perhaps appropriate for a car that offers something different to look a little different. That was always Lexus's perspective when discussion turned to the quirky design of earlier versions of this first generation CT200H. The problem for the brand, though, is that buyers in the premium segment are a notoriously conservative bunch, hence the need for the minor aesthetic changes made for the 2018 model year version of this car, all aimed at offering a much stronger visual link to pricier, more established offerings in the Lexus lineup. The shape remains divisive, though. If you prefer the anonymity of something like an Audi A3, you won't like it at all. But for those who appreciate a different take on the design of a premium compact hatch, the CT still has something to offer. The main aesthetic updates with this revised model feature here at the front, where the distinctive spindle-style grille gets a classier chrome frame and a smarter mesh pattern that now flows uninterrupted from top to bottom. As before, the headlamps feature arrowhead-shaped daytime running lights, but on plusher variants, these have been repositioned to sit above single projector by LED headlamp beams. Further down, the fog lamps now get metallic grey bezels. From the side, the profile remains as before, with a steeply raked windscreen and a long flowing roofline. The daytime running light strips form the starting point for this waistline crease that uh, eases back above the door handles into the unusually shaped C-pillar. Uh, this lower crease uh, kinks up towards the rear to showcase the hybrid badge. And for this revised model, there's a smarter range of 16 and 17 inch alloy wheel designs. We've got 17 inch rims here. 
More noticeable though are the changes made to the rear. These smarter, shapelier tail lamps are now all LED units, featuring turn indicators moved to their lower edges, and even these little aerodynamic side fins. The bumper's been restyled too. Uh, I'm not quite sure about these dark grey boomerang shaped trim embellishments on either corner, but the lower part with its smarter metallic black and silver finish looks quite smart. Overall it's a shape that you'd be pleased to have in your driveway, but without the badge work I still think the neighbours might wonder what you'd bought. But you won't be worrying very much about their opinions once you take a seat behind the wheel. Prior to doing so, you get an example of what the brand calls its Obertanashi hospitality, with a welcome lighting arrangement that illuminates selected exterior and interior lights for 15 seconds when the vehicle is unlocked. Once inside, you'll be reminded of the fact that Lexus does interiors exceptionally well, this one still being good enough to embarrass some direct German competitors. The equipment adjusted price saving you might enjoy over a rival BMW 1 series or an Audi A3 may well mean that you can afford to specify leather and if you do so you'll find that the hide is tactile and beautifully finished complemented by aluminium inserts, satin metallic finishing, carefully crafted soft touch plastics and lovely touches like this stitched instrument binnacle cover. I love the brilliantly supportive six or eight way adjustable seat, the cockpit like feel of the low set perfectly sighted driving position and the way that all the controls fall neatly to hand and operate with a quality click. As for changes made to this revised model, well the main one is something that you have to spend a bit of money to enjoy, this larger 10.3 inch centre dash infotainment screen that features as part of the Lexus premium navigation package. If you can't stretch to the top spec premier derivative that gets it as standard, it's an affordable option on most variants. Otherwise, you get the 7 inch monitor that was previously the largest you could have in this car. Now, in some ways, we prefer the lesser Lexus media display setup because it functions with a conventional lower rotary dial controller rather than this awkward mouse type. Uh, remote touch interface setup that takes a bit of getting used to and is fiddly to use, especially on bumpy roads. Still, the premium navigation package will leave you better connected, incorporating voice recognition and sophisticated features for improved journey planning and onboard connectivity. That means access to connected services via your smartphone for things like fuel prices, uh, traffic information, street view picturing and weather reports. As before, the dashboard is divided into two sections, an upper display zone with that display screen and a lower operation zone where you'll find the gear stick and the various system controls. At first glance, you'd be forgiven for mistaking this metal finished circular dial by the stubby auto gear stick for the infotainment system control dial. Actually, it's the driving mode controller and if you use it to switch into Sport, the most dynamic of the provided settings, the high visibility Optitron dials you view through the grippy leather stitch steering wheel change in background colour from blue to red. Plus the neat hybrid dial to the left of the speedo with its charge, eco and power segments changes seamlessly to a more conventional rev counter. It's one of a whole series of lovely touches around this cabin that you only begin to appreciate after you've used the car for a bit. Uh, the way, for example, that the electric windows slow for the last part of their travel to minimise the sound of closure. If it's raining, you might also notice that the glass used repels water. And I like the way that you can operate the heating and ventilation controls, either via the main centre dash screen or by these controls on the centre stack. The kind of money that this car requires doesn't usually mean much in terms of real luxury anymore, but it does here. Things we weren't quite so keen on include the awkward ratcheting foot brake and the way that door bin space is so restricted by these oversized speakers. Also restricted in terms of stowage space is the glove box, most of the room inside of which is taken up by the handbook. On the plus side, there are two deep cup holders in front of a usefully sized lidded storage bin incorporating a lift-out coin holder. 
Now this bin doesn't have any connection points inside. You'll find these under this center console flat. Twin USBs, a 12 volt and an aux in point. In front is a crevice for your smartphone. Lexus has remembered to give you an overhead storage compartment for your sunglasses. And there's a CD player for all your old plastic discs. Something that you can't automatically take for granted on luxury cars these days. Time to take a seat in the rear. If you're tempted to complain about the amount of space on offer here in the back, then you clearly haven't sat in the back of a rival BMW 1 Series, Mercedes A-Class or Audi A3 very recently. Though it suffers from a high waistline, which restricts the airiness of the cabin somewhat, this Lexus offers slightly more passenger space than any of these cars, with comfortable room for two adults, as long as they're not too tall and space at a pinch for three thanks to the notably low center transmission tunnel. Now it's a pity that you don't get a center armrest, uh, door pockets, air vents or a 12 volt socket back here, uh, but there are seat back pockets. But I haven't yet touched upon practicality something that you'd expect to be compromised by the need to find somewhere to stow the hybrid systems rather old tech nickel metal hydride battery pack as it turns out clever packaging of this unit between the rear wheels means that it takes up relatively little boot space indeed this 375 litre luggage bay is pretty much as large as you get in a rival Audi A3 Sportback, a bit more than you get in a BMW 1 Series or a Mercedes A-Class, and a lot more than you get in a Volvo's uh, V40. Now, there's no adjustable height boot floor, bag hook or 12 volt socket, but you do get this useful underfloor compartment. There are corner compartments on each side, this floor mounted tie down strap and chromed tie down hooks at each corner. Inevitably though, the space occupied by that nickel metal hydride battery has to tell somewhere. And sure enough, when you fold down the 60-40 split folding rear bench, you'll find that the 985 litre total cargo area provided is the smallest in the segment. Still, it's flat and usable. You get a wide range of trim levels with this improved CT200H, but as before, they all embellish one essential package that gives you a five-door body style and an automatic-only petrol-electric hybrid power plant, offering a combined 134 brake horsepower output. Prices range in the 23,500 to 31,000 pound bracket, and as before, the real value lies in the entry-level derivative, now badged SE. Today we've gone for the next trim level up, luxury, which for many could represent the sweet spot in the range. If though you've the budget to see just how plush a CT can be, then at the top of the lineup you'll be directed to the ritziest premier version. Mind you, in the real world, justifying a spend of over £30,000 on that top variant would be difficult, not least because the same kind of money would buy you the Lexus brand's stylish IS Saloon, also a hybrid, but with nearly twice as much power. If you like the CT, but you want a well-equipped one, better options might lie either by taking this mid-range luxury spec model and adding a few well-chosen extras, which is what's happened here, or by going for the body-kitted F-Sport variant. We'll go through equipment levels in detail in a moment, and you can decide from there. So what kind of value proposition does overall pricing for this Lexus represent in the premium compact hatch market segment? Uh, we'll take an initial glance at the price lists and if you're looking at the bottom of the CT200H range, you might think that you'd be paying the same kind of money for one of these as you would be for the direct German diesel alternatives. Audi's A3 Sportback 1.6 TDI, uh, BMW's 116D and Mercedes A180D. But that of course ignores the fact that for a direct like-for-like -like comparison with this Lexus, you'd need to be looking at all these rivals in automatic form, which then of course makes them at least £1,500 more expensive. Even wannabe premium compact hatch models like 
uh, base diesel auto versions of the Infiniti Q30 and the Citroen derived DS4 cost nearly a thousand pounds more while the premium for a base diesel auto Volvo V40 is nearly double that. Lexus also contends that a CT is better equipped than all these alternatives. And of course, it's the only car in the segment featuring hybrid power in its most affordable non-plug-in form. The only other conventional hybrids available around this price point are the Kia Nero, which is a little SUV, and the Hyundai Ioniq, which is a car more directly targeted at a Toyota Prius. Neither will be of much interest to a typical CT200H buyer. What else might you consider? Well, there are plenty of mid-sized SUVs, of course, in the 20,000 to 30,000 pound bracket. But aside from that Kia model we mentioned, none of them feature any sort of hybrid power. And anyway, to get a mid-sized SUV with a premium badge, you're looking at needing to spend, well, nearly 30,000 pounds. What about a plug-in hybrid premium hatch? It's a nice idea, but it's also a pricey one, despite the fact that plug-in models qualify for a £2,500 government plug-in car grant that doesn't apply to this little Lexus. Even with this grant deducted, an Audi A3 Sportback e-tron, the only plug-in model at the really premium end of the compact hatch sector, costs around £34,000. If you are prepared to compromise on badge equity a little, you could go for a plug-in hybrid Volkswagen Golf GTE, but one of those would still cost you well over £26,000, even after the grant had been deducted. What about an all-electric car of this size? A base Nissan Leaf would cost you a little less than this Lexus, a base Hyundai Ioniq electric a little more but neither has the premium feel of a CT200H. And of course, in both cases, you're gonna be severely restricted when it comes to your all electric driving range. Not tempting. We could understand then, if having considered all of that, you concluded that an affordable CT200H variant does just enough to save the planet without too many restrictions on your comfort, your lifestyle, or your purse. Should that be the case, you'll be wanting to know just how generous Lexus has been with the standard spec. And the answer is that even on the base spec SE variant, the kit list is pretty reasonable. So you can expect to find 16 inch alloy wheels, LED illumination for the daytime running lights and tail lamps, rain sensing wipers, power folding mirrors, and a rear spoiler. Inside there's dual zone climate control and a driving mode system that allows you to tweak steering feel, throttle response and gear shift timings. Infotainment's taken care of by the Lexus media display with its 7 inch center dash monitor and rotary controller. Via this setup you access Bluetooth phone compatibility, a six speaker stereo with DAB tuner, an aux in socket and two USB ports. An SE Plus pack adds larger 17-inch wheels, rear parking sensors, Lexus navigation, and all the benefits of the Lexus Safety System Plus package. We'll get to that in a moment. The next rung up in the CT ownership ladder is the luxury trim level that, as I said earlier, we're trying here, which gives you those SE Plus pack features, the 17-inch wheels, the rear sensors, the navigation, but also adds to them with keyless entry, heated front seats and front parking sensors. Beyond that, budget permitting, you could look further up the lineup at the more dynamic looking F Sport variant, the only derivative in the range that can be had with the desirable performance lateral damping system that allows you to tweak ride quality, an important feature to have on this rather firm riding car. Other standard F-Sport features, in addition to those you get at the luxury trim level, include a body kit, special 17-inch alloy wheels, aluminium pedals, an F-Sport leather steering wheel, and an auto-dimming rearview mirror. Now, if all that's not enough, and you want the ultimate CT200H, you'll possibly be directed to the flagship Premier model. This gives you leather upholstery, a 13-speaker Mark Levinson surround sound audio system, full LED self-leveling headlamps, and power-folding auto-dimming door mirrors. 
I say possibly you'll be directed to the Premier variant. That's because, in our view, a better alternative for a CT buyer wanting everything would be to stick with an F-Sport trimmed model and equip it with the optional Premier pack that Lexus offers, which for just over £4,000 more gives you all the Premier spec features I've just covered. Now that way, your car will have that important lateral performance damping system that I just mentioned, a setup that can't be added into an ordinary Premier model or any other CT come to that. On to options. A key upgrade with this revised CT200H is the larger 10.3 inch screen and extra features of the Lexus premium navigation system, but you only get that set up as standard on the top premier model. However, provided you avoid entry level trim, it's possible to relatively affordably upgrade to it, as has happened here. Alternatively, you can add in an upgraded entertainment system across the range. Beyond entry level trim, you can specify a sunroof, uh, for luxury and F-Sport models, leather upholstery can be specified as a standalone option if you want it. And with luxury and premier trim, you can swap the 17-inch wheels for 16-inch rims at no extra cost if you want to get a slight boost in running cost efficiency. As for the aesthetic stuff, well, you're probably going to want one of the metallic paint shades, possibly paired up with the optional black sonic combination contrast coloured titanium roof. Uh, F-Sport buyers will be offered a special Fuji Red body colour option, which comes with a black roof. Avoid entry level trim, and there's also a sport pack available too, with various cosmetic embellishments included. As for other visual accessories, well, there are a couple of uh, Fuyu 16-inch alloy wheel designs and some smart-looking 17-inch F-Sport 17-inch rims. Uh, for the inside, there are carbon fibre dashboard inlays and illuminated scuff plates for the doors. On to practicalities. Across the range, a protection pack guards against knocks and scrapes, and roof racks are available with holders for bicycles, skis and snowboards. Plus you might want to look at a roof box, uh, wind deflectors for the side windows, door handle protection film and protection for the rear bumper. For the boot, there are vertical and horizontal cargo nets to hold small items in place, plus there's a trunk liner and a foldable storage box. On to safety. One of the key changes made to this revised CT200H model lies in the fact that nearly all variants now get the package of cutting-edge, camera-driven electronic safety features included in the brand's Lexus Safety System Plus setup. It's standard, provided you avoid the base SE spec model. Now, this package includes six key elements. As you'd expect in this day and age, one of them is an autonomous braking system. Lexus calls it a pre-collision system, one of those that scans the road ahead as you drive in search of potential collision hazards. If one is detected, you'll be warned. If you don't respond or aren't able to, the brakes will automatically be applied to decrease the severity of any resulting accident. This setup is also able to specifically identify people and will apply braking if a pedestrian is detected in front of your CT200H at speeds of between 6 and 50 miles an hour. The other five Lexus Safety System Plus features can be quickly covered. Lane Keeping Assist warns dozy drivers who drifted out of their lanes on the highway and provides gentle steering assistance to ease you back to where the car ought to be. Sway warning sounds an alert and displays a warning if steering input, lane positioning and vehicle sway suggest driver fatigue. Automatic high beam automatically dips your headlights at night. Um, adaptive cruise control automatically keeps you a safe distance behind the car in front on the highway. And road sign assist pitches road signs on the move, displaying them on the dash. As for more conventional safety kit fitted to all CT200H models, well, pretty much everything you'd expect is present and correct. So, tick off a pedestrian-friendly bonnet, Isofix child seat fastenings, anti-whiplash head restraints, an emergency brake signal for panic stops, and no fewer than eight airbags. 
as well as the usual twin front side and curtain bags. These include a driver's knee bag and more unusually a front passenger knee bag too. What else? Well across the range you'll also find a tyre pressure monitoring system um, as well as a hill start assist control to stop you from drifting backwards on uphill junctions. In addition there are of course all the usual electronic driving aids for braking, traction and stability control. It's disappointing that this revised CT200H doesn't incorporate the much improved hybrid powertrain that was introduced into the fourth generation Toyota Prius in 2015. Given that the changes here amount to only a mild facelift, the cost of engineering in that much improved power plant with its smaller electric motors and battery presumably couldn't be justified. Still, despite that, cost of ownership remains an area where the CT200H can really hurt its conventionally powered rivals. That's assuming that you take everything into account, including benefiting kind taxation. As we said earlier in this film, there's only one drivetrain package on offer, but it makes quite a difference whether you pair it up with 16-inch or 17-inch wheels, uh, which is why plusher variants like this one offer a no-cost 16-inch wheel downgrade option if you want it. With the 17-inch rims that most CT200H models will come with, you're looking at 68.9 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle and 94 grams per kilometre of CO2. With the smaller 16-inch rims, though, you can improve those figures to 74.3 miles to the gallon and 88 grams per kilometre. To be frank, we found figures like these hard to replicate in our time with this car. Lexus may be able to achieve these returns by initially creeping along at under 25 miles an hour on an industry test track until the full electric-only driving range is used up, but try that in the real world and you'd get a queue of angry motorists behind you. Having said that, Lexus's best officially quoted figure does outstrip its diesel competitors by up to 10%, despite this car being the weight of a portly passenger heavier than one of those. As a result, if you remember to choose the Eco setting on the driving mode controller that'll make you put up with restricted throttle response, your real-world returns shouldn't be too far off what you get in a black pump-fueled rival. And of course you'll be filling up more cheaply from the green pump. Look at automatic diesel rivals for comparison and you'll find that a BMW 116D and a Mercedes A180D both manage 68.9 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle, while the Audi A3 Sportback 1.6 TDI returns 72.4 miles to the gallon. The CT200H's case looks even better when you come to consider CO2 emissions. None of the automatic diesel rivals I've just mentioned can break the 100 grams per kilometer barrier, so all will cost significantly more to tax. All CT200H variants have a BIK rating of 17%. Based on 2019 to 2020 taxation rates, a top rate 40% taxpayer would save £792 a year in BIK taxation running this Lexus in comparison to a rival base diesel auto Audi A3 Sportback 1.6 TDI. Compare against a BMW 116D SE Auto and the difference over a year would be £1,044. So well over £3,000 over a typical three-year operating period. Quite a saving. Companies who buy this car will be able to avoid the 10% tax surcharge applied to diesel vehicles and claim a 100% write-down against corporation tax. While we're covering the annual savings this CT200H can generate in comparison to its diesel segment rivals, you might also want to take into account the cheaper cost of the fuel you'll be using. We reckon that could add up to around £150 or so if you covered a decent annual mileage. And you'll be paying less for servicing too. Garage visits are needed every year or every 10,000 miles, whichever comes first which doesn't sound especially noteworthy, but when your car does return to the dealership, it'll certainly help that the Lexus hybrid drive system has low maintenance requirements built in. 
So there's no starter motor or alternator to go wrong, no dry belts to break, uh, maintenance-free timing chain, no particulate filter to get clogged up with diesel fumes, and of course, thanks to the CVT Auto gearbox, no clutch either. The hybrid drive system has a good record for minimising tyre wear and its battery will last the life of the car. Plus the regenerative braking system helps extend the life of the brake pads. Over 60,000 miles of driving, the front pads should only need replacing once, while the rear pads and all the discs will probably last the full distance. As for the real eco stuff, NOx emissions are way down on what you'd be smoking out at the wheel of a diesel. They're rated either at 3.3 mg stroke kilometer uh, when the engine's going and of course are reduced to zero when you're driving in EV all electric mode. On top of that, this car uses energy efficient air conditioning and LED lighting, plus plenty of bio materials too. Even the stereo speaker diaphragms do their bit, made out of bamboo charcoal. The parallel hybrid technology employed here might be fairly old tech. Uh, future hybrid engines will swap this CT's nickel metal hydride battery technology for lithium ion batteries. But that's probably a good thing, as it's fully proven over 60 billion kilometers of driving worldwide, and in any case is protected by a five year, 60,000 mile warranty. You can choose to further extend this every year in the first decade of ownership with no limits on total mileage. As you'd expect to get the full benefit of the potential efficiency of this Lexus, you've got to do your part as a driver, and that means proactive use of the various modes and systems provided. I've already mentioned the drive mode select systems eco mode. Uh, you'll also need to keep a very careful eye on the hybrid system gauge that replaces the usual rev counter on the dash, making sure that the needle stays as often as possible in either of the blue eco or charge zones. Those in a frugal frame of mind will also want to keep an eye on the various graphical screens provided by the fascia's center dash color monitor. Go to the trip information part of its vehicle section and you'll find under past record a screen that graphically shows your success or otherwise in terms of recently achieved frugality. Another option on this screen is a useful energy monitor there to show at a glance at any time what's uh, charging or being driven by what. The graphics for this are provided in simpler form as one of the selectable settings provided by the central instrument binnacle display screen. What else? Uh, well, residual values aren't quite as strong as those of German rivals, but a percentage figure after three years in the low 40s isn't too bad. Your insurance grouping will be 17E unless you go for an F-Sport variant, which is 19E, or a base SE spec model without the Lexus Safety System Plus Pack. That base variant attracts a 20E rating. You might also want to know about general total vehicle warranty cover. Here, it's annoying that Lexus doesn't copy the five-year package that parent company Toyota offers with the same technology. So on a CT200H, you get the same kind of three-year, 60,000-mile deal offered by German rivals. Fortunately, reliability surveys suggest that you'll almost certainly never have to use it. There's also a 12-year anti-corrosion and perforation warranty and a three-year paintwork and surface rust warranty. There's still a lot to like here. Essentially, a CT200H costs no more than the Toyota Prius it remains fundamentally based upon, yet offers extra quality, more equipment, and the higher residual values of the prestigious Lexus brand. Now, we're disappointed that this car hasn't been updated with the drivetrain, gearbox, and handling changes made to the more recent fourth generation Prius design. Still, it probably wasn't cost effective for Lexus to do that so late in this Mark I CT model's production life. Cost effectiveness is something you might keep coming back to with this car, or at least you will if you're a potential buyer and you care about minimizing your annual running costs. 
Motoring writers who don't have to worry about such things merely whine about the over-firm ride, the frustrating CVT gearbox and the fact that this car doesn't handle as well as its German rivals. To some extent these faults were addressed as part of this car's 2014 model year update but they remain significant for a certain group of buyers. There are plenty of people shopping in this sector though who, if they were aware of this car, might feel that these drawbacks were more than offset by things of greater importance. Running costs that'll save you thousands on your tax bill over a typical operating period. Limo-like standards of refinement and a cabin that's still one of the classiest in the segment. Lexus could have given itself a better chance of appealing to this demographic if from the outset with this car it had gone for a more comfort oriented handling package or failing that if it had made its lateral performance damping system more widely available across the range. Even so, the CT200H continues to offer many of the things typical middle management executives want bound up in a properly eco-friendly package. It's one that's arguably now even more in tune with our times than ever, and it feels a little fresher thanks to the 2018 model year changes. Providing you buy into CT200H ownership lower down the range where the real value is, you'll do without the high asking prices of plug-in hybrid competitors, yet you'll pay no more than you would for a rumbly, smoky diesel rival. If you don't really care about handling dynamics and you're fed up with the default German choices in this segment, what's an offer here could still make an awful lot of sense on the balance sheet and in your driveway.